Eric, we have a number of pest concerns in our orchard as well. And I wanted to start by looking at our pear tree here. We're having a, a major disease problem. Can you tell us a little bit about what it is and how to identify sure. it? Sure. Uh, apples and pears are very susceptible to a bacterial disease called fire blight. Okay. And what it does, it, it infects part of the tree mm -hmm. at the tips and then they start dying back from the tips. So all of these leaves, all of these fruit will turn this black color mm. and it's called fire blight because it looks like it's been burned. Okay. And so a bacterial disease needs to have a wound to enter. So um, that could be just as easily as some uh, a breaking of the bark, you know, through mm -hmm. wind damage or hail or, okay. or some other thing so that that bacteria can enter in. But it's very common in uh, pears and apples. Now once we have it, what can we do to manage this disease? Well, on this size of tree, uh, there's not a whole lot you can do at this stage. This is really something you need to prevent from ever happening. Okay. Uh, so there are uh, compounds like uh, copper mm -hmm. uh, that can be used to, as a dormant spray that you can spray maybe a couple of times over the winter uh, to, to help get this under control. So we're going to try to avoid it altogether by using a preventative. That's right. With most diseases, well, with all diseases, you don't ever want to see them. You mm -hmm. want to prevent them. Okay. Now, we have the same disease on a smaller pear tree here. Um, are there some different management techniques that we can use for this? Yes. On this type of tree, you can actually go ahead and cut this out mm -hmm. uh, with, a, with some hand shears. Okay. And, the, and then what you do with it is actually... Uh, burn this material so that it'll kill the bacteria and won't mm -hmm. spread. We again. certainly don't want to leave it in the landscape or That's even right. put it in our compost pile. Can you demonstrate uh, where we want to get in for these pruning cuts? Yeah, uh, this is going to be a little bit difficult um, to do because you're seeing a lot of these side shoots actually being damaged first, but the, mm -hmm. these are look fine. Okay. So what I'm going to do initially and is just to cut off some of these side shoots that have the problem okay and cut it back to a growing point and in this in this case the growing point is all the way at it, the base right all okay. the way at the base mm -hmm. so a lot of these different side shoots just will come off mm -hmm. um, and then you actually go ahead and, and get rid of those mm -hmm. burn them uh, and then come back periodically and see what the progress is mm -hmm. uh, on some of these other shoots now Fire blight likes really fast growing, uh, healthy uh, material that's really green and succulent. So something like this is going to be somewhat susceptible to fire blight. I assume our fertilizer program is going to affect that new growth on our trees. That's correct. Mm -hmm. uh, pears are very efficient users of nitrogen. Okay. And so you want to limit your, the nitrogen that you apply to pears especially. Um, because they will use it efficiently and create very fast growing tissue which makes it susceptible to fire blight. Okay, and one last point, we've cut some diseased tissue out of our tree. We want to make sure and sterilize our pruning right. equipment. Uh, before we go to another tree or anything, we want to go ahead and clean these and sterilize them before we uh, transfer anything. Okay, now I was wondering if the, these are Asian pears that we've been talking about. Are different species of pears or even apples more susceptible to fire blight? Yes, it, there is some difference in susceptibility among species, uh, but also among uh, different cultivars within the species. So you have, just have to make sure you know what you're getting, uh, that they're fire blight resistant. Okay. We have some insect issues to take a look at next. Why don't we move into that? Great. Well, Eric, one of the most damaging insect pests that we find in our fruit trees is the plum curculio. And uh, we seem to have some in our plum tree this year. Right, we do have some, and it is a damaging insect. Uh, it's a weevil mm -hmm. insect that as a grub in the soil, and then once we get some rains in the early spring, it comes out, orients itself to the tree, and kind of climbs up the mm -hmm. trunk of the tree. Okay. And so what it does is actually uh, feeds on on the fruit and lays an egg in there and what we end up seeing is a crescent shaped scar mm -hmm. on the fruit and um, that's an indication that we've had plum curculio damage. And is that from where the egg was laid on yes, the Yes the egg is laid in there and mm -hmm. so at this stage uh, it's just an egg 
but it will become a larva or a worm mm -hmm. and that'll eat the inside of that fruit and then sometimes the it'll just drop off the tree or sometimes it'll stay in there and uh, you have to be careful not to eat it. Okay, what can we do to manage the palm curculio in our fruit trees? Well, uh, there are a couple of different things you can use. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're looking at type of an organic, you can kind of do pyrethrum uh, control and okay. spray those. Uh, if you're not concerned about that, you can use carbaryl or malathion to control them. But it's kind of, you've got to know when the insect is out and, and spray. Uh, at that time. Okay, and it's called plum curculio, but you actually attack other uh, fruit trees as well. That's right. Uh, peaches are very susceptible. Mm -hmm. We'll see a lot of injury on peaches and, uh, you know, a lot of different fruits. So it's, even though plum is maybe the first one it was identified on, it's, it's very widespread. Okay. Now what other pests are we, do we need to be aware of at this time of year? Well, really we need to start thinking about fungal diseases and so for some people it's hard to wrap their minds around because you don't see it now, but mm -hmm. now is a prime time for it to get started on your fruit. Okay. So uh, by spraying and preventing it now, it won't show up later in the season. Yeah, we talked about that need to treat fungal diseases more preventatively in, in all diseases. Um, exactly, exactly. So what might we consider for preventative controls? Well, the, the best thing I can recommend is when you go to the store, uh, select a fungicide that's specific uh, or has the fruit tree that you're mm -hmm. wanting to spray on the label. We always want to make sure that it's labeled properly. That's right. Well, there's one more insect in our orchard that I wanted to take a look at before we leave. Great. Well, Eric, we noticed that some tent caterpillars have built a web up in our peach tree. Right. This is a uh, very common. Uh, you'll see this from time to time, but it's really only an aesthetic or a cosmetic type of thing. It's not going to do any damage to the tree. So if it's on a limb that's easily uh, removable, you can cut it out. Mm -hmm. Or if it's important to the structure, like we see here, we don't want to cut a big, huge limb off. Mm -hmm. Well, the easiest thing to do is just to pull it out. Okay. So you just grab it and yank it out. Okay, and we see these in our ornamental trees as well as our fruit trees. So simple way to manage them in the landscape and get rid of those unsightly bags. Mm -hmm. Right. Or if you prefer, you can just leave it there. It's not going to do much damage. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing a bit more about our fruit trees. Great. My pleasure.